spend a little bit of time showing you something that's been quite a long time in coming. Um, earlier this year, I was in conversations with a number of people around how to make uh, setting up uh, light shows easier and one of the major obstacles, and we see this all the time in the support posts on the forums, etc., is dealing with controller configurations, start channels, etc., etc. And it set me thinking to how could I actually get rid of the entire concept of a start channel or at least hide it away from the user as much as possible. And uh, so back in February, we wrote a, a specification. We said, look, this is how we think we might want to make it work. Um, and now that um, uh, Dave Pitts is a lot closer to uh, having the next version of his Falcon firmware out, etc. cetera, we've, we've spent the last couple of weeks just polishing up an implementation of that protocol. And I wanted to demonstrate it. Now, this this is not in dot thirty two. It probably may not even make dot thirty three. It might be in dot thirty four. We'll, we'll see how it goes. There's little point in putting it out there until uh, the new Falcon firmware is out there and some people are starting to use it because um, there's clearly a prerequisite to have that controller. Um, so, how does it work? Well, basically, uh, we've uh, we've got the new Falcon firmware here. Um, it's currently in its standard uh, E131 ArtNet mode. There are a bunch of new modes on the controller because it's a player now and everything else. Um, it's got a network configuration. Um, I've given it a name. He's, uh, oh, let's give him a name. I don't know, let's call him Fred. Uh, we'll save him and reboot him. And he's all good. Just a typical Falcon controller. Wait for the reboot. It takes a few seconds for the Falcon to reboot when you change its details. All right, so it's all good. Standard Falcon controller. So now what we've got over here is there's a couple of new buttons. There is this add ZCPP, which is the, the zero configuration pixel protocol, which is what we're calling it because you don't have to configure it. Um, the idea being is that you actually never need to lo log onto the Falcon at all. Let's imagine you've plugged it in. It's been given an IP address. You come down to here and you click on the discover button. And what happens is x -Lights reaches out into the network and, and basically broadcasts a message and says, hey, Falcon controls or any controllers, is there anyone out there? And it comes back with a controller. In this case, it's found the controller. Um, his name's Fred. He's, uh, and he's got 49,152 channels, which is basically as many channels as the Falcon supports. Um, and that's his IP address. And so it's gone out and found him. And I'm just going to save him. Um, one of the beauties of this new protocol and the way it's been implemented in x -Lights is that um, uh, even though you've got uh, 49,000 channels, if you don't use them all, it won't actually send them all. It'll only send up to as many as you define in use. Uh, it'll inflate the size of your FSCQ files, but it won't flood your network with unnecessary network traffic, which is kind of nice. Um, the protocol itself is also much more efficient. Um, it basically uses an entire ethernet frame. So you get roughly 1500 bytes uh, per packet um, with a very small header. So very small overhead, very efficient on the wire. So now we come over to our layout and let's go and create some stars. Let's imagine I, I want to have three stars. We'll just take two of them now. Uh, maybe I want a set of arches. Maybe I want to have a mega tree. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll put a matrix in as well. So now I need to go and set what, well, Historica would have gone and set their start channels. And you can see that it's chained them all together up here. And, you know, they're all chained up. And they happen to be on the controller and it's all good. But of course, when you're putting props together, you're thinking about, well, where am I going to plug it in and what I'm going to do? And we've always had the controller connection, but this takes it to the next level. So let's imagine these two stars are connected to each other and they're both on port one. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to here and it says here, use start channel. We're going to change that and say, these are actually on controller thread, which they are. 
we need to set the controller connection. Well, we know they're on port one, so 2811 pixels and they're on port one, that's all good. That one's fine. Then we'll come over to the second one and we'll say, well, he's also on Fred. Uh, his controller connection is also WS2811 uh, output one. And this one's actually plugged into the back of the first star. So we're gonna chain him up. So we'll bring up this. He's not at the beginning, he's at after the star. We'll click OK. And so now they're chained together. Okay, so you get this slightly different start channel format, but yes, he's on the first channel through to 150, 151 to 300, and that's all been determined automatically. Let's imagine I come over here to my matrix and I'm gonna change my definition of my matrix. I'm gonna make it four strings of 200 pixels folded four times. Um, again, I'm gonna attach it to Fred. Um, this one's on WS2811 colon 10, um, and it's at the beginning of that, so it's all good. And I'm gonna click save. Now, notice in doing this, it's put the matrix up at the end of the first channel and it's actually overlapping with archers because archers have been told that they start after star two so we'll have to go and fix that up um, but the matrix now starts immediately after star two so let's go to the arch here um, also on Fred um, also WS 2811s but we're going to put him on port four uh, we're connecting them up out of order but that's okay um, and it's the first thing on the port. So it's come up and set up by start channel again. And notice that it's just, it's just put it in there. It's neatly um, put it onto the end of the matrix in terms of the start channels, but it's all good. They're not overlapping, it's all great. And, oh, sorry, that was on four. So let's put this one on five. Again, I'm gonna change this to be uh, four strings of, of, um, I don't know, let's make them of 150 and three strands per string, just for the hell of it. Again, we're gonna put him onto Fred. Again, we need to set the start the um, start channel, so this will be 2811 and I don't know, five. Sounds like a good place to put him. Okay, so let's have a quick look, check our start channels all look okay. Nothing look like it's overlapping, it all looks good. Um, because uh, the, uh, the uh, and I'll show you this in a minute, because ZCPP happens, does a lot of stuff behind the scenes, it becomes increasingly dependent upon check sequence to just make sure that you haven't made any mistakes. Um, so there's some now some ZCPP checks that come in here and it says it's gone through, it's applied the rules for the controller, no problems found. It all looks pretty good, so pretty happy with that. Now, let me quickly show you what happens if you, you get that wrong. So let's come up to the star here and drop another star in, and we're gonna put this on the end of string one, but of course it's not on the end of string one. String one ends at, at channel 300. This is on 2701, so it's all over the place. But that's okay, what we'll do is we'll come down to, um, I'm down to this. We're going to put him on Fred, but let's not fill the controller connection in and let's quickly go and run um, check sequence again. And now we're getting errors, right? Um, this thing has an invalid controller connection. Um, and so um, yeah, it doesn't have its details. So that's going to be a problem. That looks like the only error it's given. So let's go back. We know that we don't want to have this on WS28111. Okay, we think we've fixed it. Actually, we haven't noticed how these channels are overlapping because we haven't told it that it needs to be chained behind star two. So let's run check sequence again and see what happens. And now we're seeing, oh, hang on a second, there's an invalid model chain. It's, it's worked out that star three, it may be a duplicate or, um, or some other problem with it. So that's clearly a problem. It's also creating model overlaps, which you would expect down here. It's also creating non-contiguous um, channels on the controller ports. Um, and that's again, because it thinks it should be at the end and instead it's at the beginning and it's creating all sorts of confusion. So we'll, we'll, let's go and clean that up by fixing the model chain up and chaining this to the end of star two. Done, quick one more time through check sequence. Uh, all clean now, it's looking good. Okay, 
So we're pretty happy with that. We've put all of our models onto our controller. We've laid them all out and everything. All looks good. So how do we upload it to our controller? Well, the answer is, is um, we don't. Uh, here, let's go back to our controller again. It's still sitting here, not doing a hell of a lot. Yeah, there's universe one and two because it's in E131 ArtNet mode and it's just monitoring user one and two. But look what happens when I click on output to lights. I come back to here and I refresh this page. Now what's happened when we output to lights is X lights actually as part of outputting to lights configures the controller. So it goes back to the controller and says, controller, you need to be in the zero configuration mode. It's now come through and uh, defined all of that. Now, first of all, it was a whole bunch of initial data, but after about 10 seconds or five seconds on average, it's gone and sent out a whole bunch of configuration data to the controller to say, port one, you've got those three stars, they're 50 stars each, that's 150 channels. So one to 450 looks good. Um, you know, it's put my matrix down here, my tree is up here, this is my arch on output four it all looks good, right? So it's totally configured the controller, uploaded everything and the controller is just working. But now I come back here and I say, you know what, actually this is not meant to be on output four. This one here's on output two. My mistake. Let's go back to our controller and look, it's already moved it across. So it's reconfigured the controller, on the fly, I didn't even stop outputting to lights. It just reconfigured it. Now, of course, if you were playing a sequence, you would still have to go back and re-render it because you've obviously put it in a different place and so forth. But what you haven't had to do is you haven't had to upload your controller. You haven't had to worry about, oh, have I uploaded it? Is it consistent, etc. As soon as you press that play button, as soon as you put the output to lights, it's going to push the data to the controller and say, here is the configuration that you should be in. And the controller will immediately respond and change to the configuration. So if I was to come in here now and say, um, I'm going to throw another arch down um, onto controller Fred, let's put it on WS281116. Looks good, come back to our controller, it's already there, right? As soon as it changes, it immediately sends up a new configuration to the controller. Um, and you can see here the number of frames that have come through and how big each frame size is. Now, the interesting thing about the frame size is it's only 4,950 bytes. Yet when we defined it on setup, it was 49,152. And the reason it's so small is because when you look at the start channels here, we're only using 4,950 channels. And X lights will behind the scenes automatically pack all the models, put them in the right order and pack them all together to use the smallest amount of space possible. So that when it's sending the data out to your controller, it's using as little of your network bandwidth as it can. Um, and you know, unlike uh, E131, where every universe turns into 512 bytes plus 126 bytes worth of header overhead, this is a mere 14 bytes of header and the rest of it is data. It's about 1500 bytes of data. So it's extremely efficient. And we're hoping a lot easier for people to use because you no longer need to worry about start channels. However, you can still see, right? So you can see that this particular arch here, as well as being on port 6, is using, uh, uh, is using the offset of 2851. And if you come down here, that 2851 matches. So you can still reconcile between what's on your props, etc. So if you're old school and you like your start channels and everything else, um, you can do that. Now, the other thing that you can do here is you're not actually technically mandated to use the controller and lose access to the start channel. If you still want to manually lay your, your models out into the address space, um, but still use the ZCCP, ZCPP protocol to upload on the fly and things like that, you can, you can remove the controller, go back to use start channel, and, and you can then manually set your own start channels, etc. And as long as they fit within the, uh, the, the channel space for that particular controller, X lights will upload it. Now, 
as with the prior Falcon uploader and everything else, there are, there are things that we support and things that we don't support. So let me run through a couple of those. If you have a single prop on, the out, on an output like this arch, etc., with a single string, with a single connection to the controller, you're all good, that's supported. If you've got several props attached to a single port like these three stars, you're all good, that's supported. If you've got a matrix like this with four, this has four inputs coming from the controller, as long as those inputs are connected um, in order, so if this starts at the bottom left, this has to go into one port, this one has to go into that port plus one, this one into that port plus two and so on up, you're all good. Um, you could even uh, chain a star onto the end of this tree on the same port and you would also be all good. And that's relatively new. The old upload didn't allow that, but you can do that now. What you can't do as easily is um, uh, split models across controllers. Um, you, know, you definitely can't do virtual strings or any of that sort of stuff. You can't do null pixels. If you're using any of those techniques, then you're still going to have to use E131 and custom configure. Uh, if, you're, if you're manually laying out your models under ZCPP, so if you were, um, if you weren't using the thread here, but had gone back to use start channel, you can actually uh, define uh, these uh, custom channels. Okay, that's an interesting bug. Um, you can define these uh, these start channels uh, here and individual start channels, and that's okay. Um, and it will uh, allow you to lay them out in different ways, etc. But look, generally speaking, it, it's really designed for the person who's using a very simple, basic setup. Um, you know, the, the prop has the same, right, the strings property on the prop is generally speaking the number of connections back to the controller. If it's a custom model, it's got one connection back to the controller. And you can remember, you can see that by coming into the node layout here where it tells you which controller connections it's using. You know, as long as it gets that right, um, generally speaking, you're all right. But if you're doing a matrix and you've got uneven string lengths, no, it's not gonna support it. You're back to manually configuring it. Um, but if you can keep your show pretty simple, if you can keep your, your, the way you connect things to your controller pretty simple, then this protocol is going to make your life a hell of a lot easier because you can just add new models. It will automatically shuffle them all around. You don't need to think about it and you don't need to think about it staying in sync. Now, of course, that's all well and good when you're in X lights, but what happens when it comes time to play the show? Well, if you're using X schedule, then X schedule will also configure the controller on the fly for you using whatever was the last configuration that you created in X lights out of your show folder. Um, at this point in time, I don't yet have um, uh, the Falcon lined up yet. Um, uh, I know Dave is, is gonna have a chat to some people and, and see if they want to add support for it sending out the, the ZCPP protocol um, and the, in which case we would change the FPP upload. Uh, it actually creates a file in your show folder, if I quickly show you that. Um, it creates this file, which is the IP address followed by the ZCPP. So that's actually going to be used by the scheduler. And if we were to put it onto FPP, we would upload that file to FPP. And that contains the configuration that the controller will receive on a regular basis and configure itself. So we thought it would be a, another step forward in uh, making things simpler, making things more foolproof, um, and uh, hopefully we can get it out for you in 33, maybe 34. Thanks, guys.